June 07, we're on the last page, page 12. Let's get started on this. Questions 68 through 71 are based on the diagram below, which shows a ray of light. Now, they tell you the frequency, and they tell you this for a specific reason, and I'll show you a bit later, uh, which is in air. So this is air. And it's incident on a boundary with fused quartz. Fused quartz. And at the boundary, part of the light is refracted and part of the light is reflected. As it turns out, I can show you this. Watch this. I can shine the laser in. And part's going to be bent. Part's going to be reflected. Part of the light will always be reflected when it comes in. And the part that's bent is the refracted part. That's pretty cool. Love my lasers. So we got this going on. Let's see what they want to know. Using a protractor, measure the angle of incidence of the light ray at the air fuse quartz boundary. So we want to know what this angle is. So hopefully you've learned how to use a protractor. But the idea is there's an angle here. We essentially set one value to be our zero point. We're going to put the, those are the vertices, whatever they call that. And if I look up here, my line's not quite long enough. So what I have to do is make it a little bit longer. So it actually hits my protractor. And then uh, right there. This lines up with my zero line, and I've got 10, 15, I don't know, that's looking like, what, 17 degrees to me? Perfectly lined up. I'm going to call it 17 degrees right there. Okay, so it's, uh, well, that's the first question. 17 degrees. My angle of incidence is 17 degrees. I'll label this just for the fun of it. Question 60. Calculate the angle of refraction of the incident light ray. Show all work, including the equation and the substitution with units. So, I know my angle of incidence is equal to 17 degrees. I'm going from air into fused quartz. Now, at this point, uh, I, a bell goes off. And I think air and fused quartz. Wait a minute. I've got a table called the absolute indices of refraction. And this is specific to a particular frequency of light. 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. I think I'm on the right track. And it has this thing called the index of refraction for air, which is 1.0. And fused quartz quartz fused right down here and that's 1.46 so now if I go to my waves and optics equations waves and optics I find absolute index of refraction that's n so this is n for air and this is n for fused quartz and I've got this equation right here that says n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2. So I need to write that down. n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. What that means is this. I go from n1 air into fused quartz, n2, and uh, I've got an angle here, and when the ray comes in, it's going to bend, and uh, we're going to, I know it's going to bend this way because I saw it with the laser beam a little bit. Such that when I multiply N1 times the sine of the angle of incidence, it's going to be equal to N2 times the sine of that angle of incidence. Basically, if this is a bigger number, then this has to be a smaller number. So N2 is bigger, so this number ends up being smaller. How much smaller is it? Well, let's do algebra first. I'm looking for sine theta 2. So I divide both sides of the equation by n2. Then I'm going to take the inverse sine. 
of this side, and that'll give me theta 2. So now I've got an equation. So I, I write 1 times the sine of 17 degrees. I divide that by 1.46. Don't forget to take the inverse sine of that. And that should give me my angle. So I take sine 17. On my calculator, I type in the number first, and then I hit the function. Uh, your calculator might be the opposite, function and then the number. I divide that by... Um, 1.46, 1.46, that's equal to that number, 0.2. I want to take the inverse sign on this calculator, it's sec second function inverse sign, and that's 11.5 degrees, which in fact is less than 17. So I'm going to say theta 2 is equal to 11.5 degrees. I've listed my knowns. I've written my formula and plugged in with units where appropriate, and I've got an answer. That part looks good. Using a protractor and straight edge, construct the refracted ray, light ray, in the fused quartz in the diagram in your answer book. So I go to the answer booklet, and now I've got to construct an angle of about 11.5. Now, here's an important point. If you struggle with the question 69 and, and you come out with the wrong answer, you, and let's say you come up with 30 degrees. You did something wrong, come up with 30 degrees. If you then construct it to 30 degrees, you'll get this point. Because this is graded based on your answer from the previous one. But we want to do it right. So we're going to use our normal as our zero line again. Right here. And I think they give you credit if you do it wrong. They should. If they don't, they should. I come down and uh, let me uh, let me change this a bit. I come over here to a uh, 5, 10, 11, 12, 11.5 degrees. Now all the way up to there. There's my 11.5 degrees. There we go, 11.5 degrees. We got it. Using a protractor and straight edge, construct the reflected light ray on the diagram in your answer booklet. Well, now this is the law of reflection, and if you need to look at your formula sheet, you know that uh, the uh, angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. They're just, they're equal. You hit it, uh, in this case, we hit it 17 degrees, you bounce off at 17 degrees. So I set this up with my zero point. Uh, come up to here. All right, let's move it so you can see me do this. There we go. 10, 15, 16, 17 degrees. And I'm going to draw an arrow going this way, just so that there's no doubt that this is the one that bounces off. I measure the two. They look pretty close. Check this again, just to make sure it is 17 degrees, because i got plenty of time. Let's go ahead and uh, get the other one. A zero on the line. And sure enough, that's 17 degrees. Okay, I'm set. And so I've got to draw it on there. That question is done.